On the breakfast, the United Kingdom has unveiled a tariff-free trade scheme with Nigeria. What does this mean for entrepreneurs in Africa's largest economy? Also on the breakfast, the 2023 elections are under threat. That's the view of a former security chief in Nigeria, who believes IPOP and terrorist activities could scuttle the country's forthcoming polls. We'll also be discussing the pages of a national daily this morning and bringing you great analysis. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Thursday morning. I hope you're having a fantastic day already. Uh, the conversation promises to be amazing and very, very interesting as we start. Well, as always, we start off with a top trending conversation. And this morning for us uh, is the fact that you have a student arrested for attempting to kidnap a Niger uh, college provost. Uh, that's number one, you know, on a top trending conversation. And it's been generating different reactions from different quarters. Number one, I mean, that's a student that you hear, a student on the one hand. And secondly, uh, the student is 18 years old. And so a lot of persons have actually said, what's really going on? But a, bef a bit of a background, you know, to the situation. The Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, has arrested an 18-year-old student over an alleged attempt to kidnap the Provost College of Fisheries. Uh, that's the new bosser in Niger State. Uh, according to that statement that was put out by Nasir Abdullahi in Niger State, the suspect is a college student and was arrested on August the 10th. Uh, Abdullahi said that the suspect had conspired with other persons who is now on the run to write a letter threatening to kidnap the provost if he failed to pay a ransom. And the spokesperson said uh, the suspect did not demand any particular amount before uh, the dictators from the command arrested him. And so he, it's been said that he's been arraigned and uh, charged with criminal conspiracy and intimidation. Uh, that's on the one hand. But it's really saddening to see that at 18, really, where did the idea come from? How, how did they even arrive at, uh, you know, uh, the thought of kidnapping a provost of their own college? and demanding for ransom. Could it be that, you know, the entire uh, activities in, in the system has actually led to all of this? Could it be that the body language that we have given over time has led to this? And that's why, you know, the younger persons or young adults are copying what's happening, you know, in the larger system. For instance, uh, who would imagine that an 18 year old would be involved in kidnapping and not just kidnapping. You probably say kidnapping your lecturer. It's as good as saying you kidnap your lecturer or your teacher, but uh, it, it's what we constantly talk about. How far and what have we done with those who have been indicted, those who have been mentioned. I mean, these criminal elements uh, that are out there, those who have, uh, we say that these are bandits and these are persons who are involved in acts of criminality and crime. Uh, what have we really, really done? You know, uh, have we been able to arrest these persons? Have there been uh, any sort of arrest made that would discourage, you know, um, people from engaging in acts of terror and kidnapping? It's a question that we ask because over time we heard that, oh, there's a terrorist, there are crimes, uh, those who've committed one or two crimes, and they go about their businesses, they're moving around, you know, without any other fear and nothing, you know, done. But that's it on the top trending. But we're hoping that the law will take its course uh, uh, just as we proceed. We take a quick break now. When we return, we continue with our top trending conversation. Please stay with us. Well, let's see the breakfast in Plus TV Africa, and it's top trending for us. Uh, our second conversation or top trending issue is that uh, the House of Representatives is probing or has probed the Agricultural Ministry of 18 billionaire bush clearing contracts, and that's quite uh, interesting, okay?
because this would not be the first time. I mean, the issue of probing has been going on for a very long time. The, the chairman of the committee, who is uh, known as Olu uh, Wale Oke, uh, he's the chairman of the committee of investigations going on, has said that contracts were awarded to companies for bush clearing, land preparation and rehabilitation of soil and plant laboratories. Now, the committee had raised, you know, is probing the queries that was raised by uh, the Office of the Attorney or Auditor General of the Federation on Ministries, Departments and Agencies. Now, during the lockdown of the country, as a result of COVID-19, some companies had taken contracts worth 18 billion naira and uh, for bush clearing from the federal ministry of agriculture for land preparation rehabilitation of soil plants lab and orders and uh, according to the investigative committee they said it's not possible to shave the head in their absence this is what they said and so that's why uh, an invitation has been put out there they've invited those who were awarded this contract to come and answer respond to the issues and showing the places that were you know supposed to be have cleared and take the people to where it was cleared so the, the, that invitation was also made and, and and so according to you know the spokesperson they said they have to take us to the land that they have cleared. We've invited the Ministry of Agriculture. We have made a submission to some of our members whose constituencies or whose projects are in this constituency were supposed to be are saying that this uh, project are domiciled or, I mean, they're supposed to be domiciled, have doubted that this project actually exists. And so for the issue of fair hearing, these invitations have been given to the companies that got the contract for them to come and tell the committee where the jobs were executed and they will wait until the end of the hearing as at yesterday or thereabout before they take action. And so according to the committee, if, we, if they're not here, we'll have to do the needful to get them to come do the needful together to come and if the needful doesn't work what happens you know with the needful but you know for first of all let's not forget that this administration has been very big about the fight against corruption and not to even talk about this administration but generally how far have we fared if you if you look at you know uh, the body that started with the responsibility of awarding contracts you find out that the federal executive council is the highest body that approved contracts in nigeria and whenever you have that stamp and it signals, is, I mean, the signal is that authority has been given to this company to, you know, to go ahead. Now, what's very legal, because you've also had an activist, human rights activist, uh, Femi Falano, who's argued that it is contrary to the law. Uh, the fact, that's the Federal Executive Council, has no right whatsoever, because it's not, you know, a constitutional thing. There's no way the law has granted, you know, the Federal Executive Council to award contracts. So it's, it's more of a systemic corruption. It's more of the lawlessness that has happened, you know, from time. From who has the right to authorize a contract? Is that being done according to what the law states? Now you have the Federal Executive Council who awards a contract, you know, on a weekly basis because they get to meet every other Wednesday. And I'm sure there was a meeting yesterday. Who knows how many contracts would have been approved when you have a body that would have been constituted. Now the Public Procurement Bureau is saddled with that responsibility. We should have been supervised, you know, uh, you know, by another body. That's the National Council, uh, Public National Council of Procurement. If you look at the 2007 Act, it gives rights, you know, uh, you know, to the bodies. That's the BPA and you know the NPC to go ahead with all of these activities. But unfortunately, that's contrary. And so, how do you even explain the fact? Because those who constitute the Federal Executive Council, you know, those who weren't. I mean. So they gave up the go-ahead. They awarded the contract for the bush clearing and all of that. And now we're asking, because there should be some supervision. If a contract, if there's a proposal, you should know where, what it is. There should be some investigation, sightseeing. Do we just wake up and approve contracts? So it's quite funny now that we're asking. Uh, it's a good thing, so it just feels like, oh, let's follow protocol. But now that the House is investigating, isn't it very funny that from the inception we didn't even get it right? Should the Federal Executive Council be involved in awarding contract? But that's also on the one side. And even if they, uh, they have gone ahead to award this contract, whose responsibility is it to, to supervise and ensure that this is not a ghost project, that it doesn't really exist? Because those who are, uh, are in this constituency or those who are in this particular region or committee or where this project is supposed to be uh, instituted are saying that they, they haven't, they, they, they can't even attest to the fact that there's something like that. 18 billionaires is what we're talking about every other time. 
It's quite saddening. And for an administration that's very big on the fight against corruption, what are we really doing? How do we even get to that point? But that's it. Fingers crossed. Let's see how all of this pans out as uh, we proceed in the course of the day or, or the days as it goes by. Uh, we move away from that. Uh, another issue is the fact that it's a political season and so consultation would be big on the plate of all of the politicians. So politicking will go on and Nigerians have cried about those who are actually uh, occupying offices because the issue of governance would have been relegated. And so uh, nobody seemed to be paying attention to the current issues of administration, administering different states and constituencies and the country entirely because everyone... Everyone has seemed to be, you know, bent on politics in 2023, the election. Who gets power, who, who gets what, when, and how they get all of the power uh, that's been. So it's, it's just the normal, uh, uh, you know, the presidential flag bearer of the APC, that's Bola Matunibu, former governor of Lagos State, has also met with uh, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in Abiyokuta over his presidential bid. We take this, uh, you know, track when we return, we continue with the conversation. Please stay with us. We have planned this event for several weeks. We have postponed it about three or four times. It was meant to hold tomorrow, but I, because of the exigencies of my office, I graciously requested that we please bring him forward to today. Not even knowing that we are going to have an August Easter in the month of August. You are indeed lucky artisans. This will be His Excellency Ashwagyu Ahmed Boratudu's first official visit to anywhere after he won the primaries of ABC. So you are indeed very lucky. Well, uh, you can actually see that, you know, that visit, you had uh, the entourage and those who accompanied uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu to visit the former president of the Federal Republic of Niger as part of his itinerary. Uh, consulting consultation is still ongoing. But, you know, the crux of what that was about or the conversation that went out is not something that we have available. I mean, what would have what would the vice uh, former president, would, what did he say to him? I mean, all of the conversation, the back and forth, is not something that's uh, very much available. Uh, and another one is that the electricity workers have suspended strike, their strike. And just yesterday, you know, they had threatened or they had said they were going to embark on strike for welfare consent until, you know, answers are uh, gotten. And so some parts of Lagos and other parts of Nigeria who probably would have experienced some blackout. But some people say, hey, it's just natural. It's something that happens uh, on a daily basis. So it's really not anything different from what we witness. But we'll just quickly look at this. When we return, we have more conversation. Please stay with us. Yes, uh, the issues that we had, I thank the Honorable Minister and uh, the Minister of State for Power for their maturity in handling these issues that we brought up. Yes, these issues could have been tackled earlier on if uh, there was the rightful communication with all parties. But well, as we have said, um, we've been given two weeks uh, to wish to report back to the, uh, the report house. Um, well, we are sure the nation that uh, such crisis will be nipped in the board before it uh, escalates. Well, it's a good thing that the, uh, the strike has been suspended. The electricity workers have decided to suspend the strike following their meeting uh, with the minister uh, talking about labor and employment, Dr. Chris Ngige. Well, it's a good thing. But let's also hope that whatever agreement would be gotten into would be respected because it feels like we seem to be experiencing the trickle down of all of the agreements that was entered. I mean, uh, these workers are striking because of a 2019 agreement, some sort of understanding that was uh, entered in 2019. And we're in 2022. Also talking about this issue. So it, it's okay to say the strike action or the strike will be suspended and the call of the strike. There's some sort of agreement but 
do both parties respect, you know, the agreement? Do they implement whatever was actually agreed upon? It's one thing that we call on our leaders to also respect agreement. I mean, it's really saddening that two persons who come together and they have some kind of agreement and which would be documented. On the other hand, another party feels it just lacks, uh, you want to say that it's the integrity and all of that. And we can't continue like this as a nation over and over and think that we expect things differently to happen. It's really saddening. But I'm sure that we can do better as a people. That's the size on our top trending this morning. We take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at the front pages of a national dailies. Please stay with us.